Now there's an old story that I want to share about a painter who sets out to paint the perfect sunrise. He wakes up early in the morning, packs up his pickup truck with his canvas, his easel, his paints, and paintbrushes, and heads to the beach, and heads to the beach to wait for that sunrise. When it finally happens, he thinks to himself, the sunrise is beautiful, but maybe tomorrow it will be better. So he packs up his things, goes back home. The next day he wakes up early and goes back to the beach to wait for the sunrise. As the sun is rising, he again thinks to himself, maybe tomorrow's sunrise will be better than today. When it comes to fixing Rhode Island's education system, we can't be like that painter. Instead of waiting for what we think might be a better day in the future, we must stay the course, double down on our efforts, and tackle the challenges facing Rhode Island's education system today. Rhode Island, we're ready to put the paintbrush to the canvas and we'll give a brush to anyone who wants to do the work with us. But when it comes time for, to, for change in education, we have waited long enough. The education movement must happen in all 39 cities and towns. And the Commissioner Infante Green is ready to work with each community to raise student achievement. Thank you, Commissioner. When the state manages school districts, it is not a nonchalant exercise. To be successful, successful it must be intentional and transparent. It must be supported by state and local leaders. It must be supported by my office. It must be supported by our teachers and union leadership. It must be supported by the mayor and the city council. It must be supported by parents in the community. And most importantly, it is not forever. The state has intervened in two local school districts, one for far too long and one not quite long enough to get the job done. I want to recognize Providence Superintendent Dr. Javier Martinez, who is already grabbing his paintbrush and doing the work to deliver results for Providence students. Javier, I know you're watching tonight at home, and thank you for stepping up. Back in 2000, yes. Back in 2019, the Hopkins Report brought to light many issues in the Providence public school system. That's the reason that the state has intervened, including the condition of buildings which were described with phrases like dire condition. Around that same time, there were $900 million worth of building needs for Providence public schools with only 160 million available to fix the problem. I have personally had my feet on the ground in every single Providence public school, and I've seen firsthand that the buildings are in better condition. We're no longer talking about the same physical spaces that were described in the Hopkins report. This is good news, and the work continues. In Providence, there are already eight new or like new construction projects in progress with additional new schools in the early planning stages. And I'm proud to say that soon, Providence will have 50% of its students in new facilities, a tenfold increase from 2017. This is progress, 
and we're going to stay the course. And this isn't just happening in Providence. Statewide, 22 major new school projects are currently under design or construction. I want to thank the leadership at the local level, our school committees, and city town councils for helping us make this happen. Our students deserve this progress. And we're using the $300 million that was approved last year by the voters and supplemented in our budget to deliver for them. All 39 cities and towns, all local school districts. We know that the pandemic had a dramatic impact on our children's education. And while we're glad that our kids got back into school and the classroom as quickly and as safely as possible, we know that there are years of recovery ahead, academic and mental health. For the last three years, the state budget has held communities harmless for student enrollment changes during the pandemic. Since the pandemic, overall public school enrollment has declined by 5,700 students. If we as a state decide to revert to the regular school funding formula, this will result in a loss of approximately $30 million to traditional public schools. I don't think that's a good idea. It is time for us to make a targeted modification to the funding formula to improve outcomes and support students with greater needs. The budget that I will send to the General Assembly will invest an additional $57 million in K through 12 education. And, an, and another four million for out of school learning programs. We will fully fund our multilingual learners and high cost special edu education. <laughs> to address the needs of these students. All our students are important to us. And within the first hundred days of my full term, normally a new four year term governor gets the first 100 days. <laughs> In our first 100 days of my full term, we will be outlining a plan to reach Massachusetts education levels by 2030. And as always, to achieve this, we will work with anyone who is willing to do the work both in and outside the classroom. 